It's been six years now since the state of New Jersey passed Megan's Law. In the aftermath of the rape and murder of seven-year-old Megan Kanka by a twice-convicted sex offender who lived across the street from her family's home. Since then, variations of Megan's Law have taken hold in every state, aimed at notifying communities whenever convicted sex offenders move into their neighborhoods. But from the beginning, the law has been attacked by lawyers who say that it violates the constitutional privacy rights of sex offenders who've served their time in prison and are trying to get on with their lives. No state has struggled more with the controversy than New Jersey. Well, six years ago, 33-year-old Jesse Tementikos was arrested and charged with killing Megan Kanka. He had two previous convictions for child sexual assault, and he had served six years in prison. After his release, he moved into a house directly across the street from the Kankas. Maureen Kanka is Megan's mother. My daughter had crossed the street to go get a girlfriend to come out and play, and um, her friend was not home. And uh, a neighbor who lived diagonally from my house um, was outside, and he lured her into his home to see a puppy dog. To see a puppy dog? To see a puppy dog. And he raped her, sodomized her, strangled her, put a plastic garbage bag over her head, secured it with a belt, and suffocated her. Stuffed her body in a toy chest and uh, dumped her body in one of our local parks. Maureen Kanka says she had no idea a pedophile like Tim Endicos lived so close to her family's home. And after Megan's death, she set out to make sure all parents would be warned if a convicted sex offender moved into their neighborhood. We want every person to know if there is a sex offender in their community because they don't belong there. They don't belong where we have children. If we had known that there were pedophiles living across the street, my daughter would be alive. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt about that. But warning communities about sex offenders has not been easy. Megan's law has been challenged in court repeatedly. And Kanka says that she's angry that judges have been more concerned about offenders' privacy rights than the rights of parents to protect their children. I've been very disgusted with the courts. Um, I don't understand why... The offenders have, it seems, more rights than our children. The problem for the courts has been this. How does a state like New Jersey give out information about sex offenders, some of which is confidential, without violating their privacy rights? To try to accomplish that, prosecutors in New Jersey, like Cindy Licardo, use what they call a tier system to assess the danger a sex offender poses to a community. The greater the risk, the greater the number of people told about the sex offender. A tier one notice only goes to law enforcement. Right. You're considered to be a low risk to the community. If you're a tier two, you're considered to be a moderate risk. Notification goes to police departments, schools, community groups, and licensed daycares. Mm -hmm. If you're a tier three offender, you're considered to be a high risk Notification goes to law enforcement, schools and community groups, and the public who are likely to encounter that offender. Police do tier three notifications by going door to door, passing out flyers with the offender's picture, physical description, and criminal history. That's what he looks like. The flyers also list the offender's exact home address. And it is that information which lawyers like Ed Barocas of the New Jersey Public Defender's Office say the state cannot give out without safeguards to prevent its abuse. What we're talking about here is one's home address. The government is saying, you have no right to privacy there. We should be able to give it out however we like. The problem is, if that occurs, then we all, all of us, you, myself, everyone, loses their right to privacy in their home address. I can see millions of Americans looking in at this moment saying, that guy next door or down the street or around the block is the fellow that committed that awful crime. And I don't want him moving in close to me. And if he does move in close to me, I want the right to know that he is there. If the person is a high risk, we have no objection to the community knowing. Our concern right now is whether this information is given out to those in need in such a way where it permits 
unnecessary and unwarranted disclosures to hundreds of thousands of unauthorized individuals. Do not share this information in, an, uh, in this notification flyer or the flyer itself with anyone outside of your household. Although police warn residents not to share or distribute Megan's Law information, Barocca says those warnings are meaningless, that they're often ignored. We have had people not only disclose it to newspapers, but make copies and distribute it all around, put it up in shops, mm -hmm. on telephone poles. What needs to be recognized is the result of the privacy intrusion. When people find out that a person is a sex offender and he lives in this particular house, the result has been that people have been shot at, people have received death threats, family members have received death threats. Yeah, he's a good boy. That's exactly what Jim Powers says happened to him. Powers pled guilty to sexually assaulting a seven-year-old girl. After serving a five-year sentence and undergoing therapy, he moved to Millstone Township in southern New Jersey to live with his girlfriend, Connie Tregotis. But Powers says that once people in the town found out about him, they tried to burn his house down. The fire went up that wall there and melted some stuff up there. And yeah. see the Powers and Trigotis also say their lives have repeatedly been threatened. Connie's received death threats on a daily basis for <laughs> for almost a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. I, if I go out and try to run on the road, if I jog down the road, people come by in the car and you know tell me that I'm dead. Under Megan's law, police tell residents only about the most dangerous sex offenders. Powers was judged to be a tier two or moderate risk offender. Thus only a few people at schools and daycare centers in Millstone were supposed to be notified about him. But it didn't take long for the whole town to discover who he was. Basically it was a rumor that just spread through the town like wildfire. It mm -hmm. was almost to the point of hysteria. When Evan Maltz, Patty Coffey, and Lynn Mealy heard about Powers, they, along with other Millstone residents, called an emergency town meeting with the state police to try to find out what threat powers might pose to their children. I think most of the people who attended that town meeting thought they were going to have more information on this individual who moved into our town. And you didn't get it. And we got nothing. We didn't even get an acknowledgement that this person is actually in our community. Malt says the lack of information created even more fear in the community. When you ask your your local police department or your state police department or your prosecutor is this true are we in danger and they tell you we can't answer you it leaves it up to everyone's imagination so whoever this person is becomes a monster in every parent's mind if there's concern among your neighbors don't you think it's reasonable for the neighbors to know who lives here I'm a tier two and no the neighbors aren't uh, under the law aren't supposed to be informed the only people who are informed are schools and daycare centers a prosecutor a judge and a psychologist have all said that Jim Powers is only a moderate quote moderate risk to society which means that he's in tier two therefore only a few people at schools and daycare centers are entitled to know about it not the folks up and down the street that sound reasonable to you no. 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 You want to know. Moderate is bad enough. That means there is a risk. Uh, what, what about the privacy rights of child sex offenders who have served their time and they want to get on with their lives? Once you touch a child improperly, I don't think you should be afforded the same rights as everybody else. I can understand that, that they're concerned and that I think they have a right to be concerned, but they don't have a right to... to to say that they're going to force me out of the neighborhood and they're going to burn my house down if, if I don't leave. The three of us here are not saying, you know, this person moved in or I heard this person moved in and, and I heard that they live in this house. Let's go get them. That's not what we're saying. We're what saying, are you saying? We need the information so that we can protect our families. But the courts have said they're not entitled to information about lower-risk sex offenders like Powers. And it's against the law for them even to talk about him. Why can't I, if I am notified, call my neighbor to say, do you, do you, did you hear about the fact that someone, a convicted sex offender, moved into our neighborhood? According to Megan's law, I can't do that. What happened to my right to, to free speech? I put that question to New Jersey Attorney General John Farmer. 
I was in Millstone Township yesterday talking to three people out there. And they say, look, it's, it's foolishness. I mean, we're not supposed to know if a tier two offender lives down the street from us. And if we do hear about that, we're not supposed to tell our neighbors about it? What the courts have done with the law, essentially, is to take the policy underlying the law, which is to notify the community, and to put it at war with itself. Because while we are notifying the community, we are also telling people that they can't tell other people. Which sounds asinine on its face. Well, it's very, I don't know if asinine is the right characterization, but it's difficult to make it work. To make it work, and to prevent further privacy challenges, Attorney General Farmer has proposed amending the state constitution so that New Jersey, like 22 other states, can post information about sex offenders on the Internet. The system that we have in place now, today, is a system that we have to deal with. Do I think it could be better? Absolutely. It could be a better system. It would be a better system if that constitutional amendment passes. But the prospect of a website like this one in Tennessee with the names, photographs, and addresses of thousands of sex offenders terrifies those among them who have served their time and are considered low risk. Like this man who asked us to disguise his identity. When I was arrested, I was sent to prison, and they said to me, you do treatment. And if you can pass the review boards, then you can come back to society and you can put your life back together. I worked more than 10 years I was in therapy, and since then, I have, I think, very well put my life back together. I have a steady job, I own a home on which I pay a mortgage, I pay my taxes, I obey the laws of our society. You know, there's nothing more I can do to show that I am now a productive citizen. He says that all he has done to rebuild his life will be destroyed if he is exposed on the Internet. My job has a, a certain amount of interaction with public and if the public were to find out I think there's a good possibility very good possibility that I would lose my job and if I lose my job I'm probably gonna lose my home if a guy has set about making a life for himself and if you believe in redemption at all it's almost impossible he is written down with that scarlet letter for the rest of his life isn't he Yes, it will make their life more difficult. Yes, it will make it more difficult for them uh, to live a normal life. But that's a consequence of the risk that they pose to society. And it's an appropriate consequence. Last month, the federal appeals court ruled that New Jersey's Megan's Law does not violate the privacy rights of sex offenders. But while that decision ended three years of litigation over the law, another legal battle is already taking shape. Come Election Day, New Jersey voters are expected to approve that constitutional amendment allowing information about sex offenders to be posted on the Internet. And if that happens, lawyers for sex offenders insist they'll go back to court again to challenge Megan's Law.